and we're good. All right. All righty. Welcome back to the Sandcast, everybody. Brought to you by Wilson. Uh, today we have a special guest, our dear friend Wilco from the King of the Court series. And uh, we're lucky to have him on right now because a King of the Court event is coming up. That's the next event uh, in the whole world, actually, and probably the first international event that's going to happen uh, in terms of international volleyball since the COVID pandemic. So uh, we welcome you to the show, Wilco. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tri. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to have uh, this, uh, this talk with you. Perfect. Yeah, and this is this is the first international event happening, right? Since uh, Qatar. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the the first event where we can bring in uh, international players. Um, it's it's hard to organize a world tour event because in a world tour event, all uh, all countries must be able to participate. And um, King of the Court um, has a different kind of status. Um, and with this, we can organize it by bringing in the teams, um, yeah, which are able to travel. Right. How many? Uh, I'm trying to think. Have... Of... Go ahead, try. No, right, you go, Trav. I was wondering because I mean, we were talking about earlier how like Europe, you know, most of the countries are are cooperating with each other, and, and it's pretty easy to travel. Um, but obviously, you know, the U.S. traveling places, there's certain restrictions. I remember I, I was signed up for one star and. Um, Serbia maybe and they said that we had to, to quarantine there for 14 days before we could play I'm wondering like how difficult was this for you to set up an international event I mean me and Tri had a pretty close look at how many hoops the AVP had to jump through just to do a, a local event um, you must have put in a lot of hours to figure this out so I mean good for you guys first off that's awesome yeah, thank you very much. But we are still working on this, uh, so, uh, so <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, um, uh, in the European Union and I think twelve other countries, uh, people can enter the Netherlands without fourteen days of quarantine. Uh, but now we're working together with the Dutch government um, to get a kind of exception for international uh, athletes uh, that. When they are tested in their country, I think it's um, in 20, no, I think it's in 70, 72 hours before you're going to fly, you must be tested. And if your test is negative, mm -hmm. you, can, you can fly, enter the Netherlands and up on arrival over here before you go into the hotel, um, you, we will get you tested again and then you can start in the tournament. But uh, at the moment, um, uh, one, one month uh, before the event, um, we are still working on, on bringing in uh, teams from the United States, from Brazil, for instance. Um, and uh, that, that's looking very good. So we are extremely positive that we have uh, the green light. Um, but on the other side, we must be realistic. Um, I think when the uh, pandemic came, um, every week it was a new week of challenges. So, so it can change easily. So that's, that's I think, the tough part. Uh, on this and uh, we can talk about that a little bit later I can give you some some insights in uh, about organizing the event and um, what kind of challenges we have and also financially but um, in terms of getting teams over here we we are very happy with the teams which are signing in um, and um, yeah hopefully we can bring everybody to the tournament yeah I think it takes a lot of flexibility on on everyone's part you know obviously it's extremely difficult just to put an event on um, but also the players need to be flexible in terms of you know we're not finding out when the events are scheduled this one's been scheduled for a while now you told us a while back but um, you know like we have to wait for the government's approval to bring us in and it's just a lot of flexibility on everyone's part everyone has to kind of do their part to to make this work um, but it's cool it kind of you know shows that all the teams that are are trying to make it happen are you know dedicated to making a living like this and doing what it takes to to play volleyball yeah you're you're absolutely right and and for for our company for sportworks we, we we organize this this king of the court event but we also organize uh, two dutch championships and uh, six stops of our national tour and um when we go back to i think march of this year we had I think around 15 events scheduled, beach volleyball events. 
Uh, we also want to go to, to Italy and uh, to Dubai. Um, but at the end, um, for King of the Court, it will be only, only Utrecht. But um, when, you, when, you, when we're looking back on, on the things, the challenges, what we had during that time, um, first, our government said, because nobody, nobody knew what was going to happen at the time, uh, around March. Um, so the yeah. government said, okay, about your events, uh, all events, uh, till the 1st of June, uh, you cannot organize. So then, then we make our first reschedule. And then I think half, half April, they said, before the 1st of September, we can do nothing. And in the Netherlands, um, in the fourth week of September, you don't want to organize an outdoor event anymore because of, of maybe rain and, and cold weather. So we thought we can do three events, two stops of the Dutch tour and, and King of the Court. And then suddenly, um, the end of June, uh, no, I think it was beginning of June, the government said, we are releasing everything from the 1st of July. So then we have a bit, another change. So we are, we are <laughs> rescaling three times. And this is not only just rescaling tournaments, but for the players, for the host cities, for your sponsors, uh, for media, etc. You have to do everything uh, back and forth. So... Um, yeah. We work in those in those crazy times for months now, and um, yeah, let's we we hope the best of it, and we we try to make everything possible, and the, and the spirit is good. So we 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 are we are working on good things. Yeah, for sure. Um, what I know that there's a few teams that are already committed, and so are the teams that have been announced already. Are they for sure able to get into the country because of? Uh, the country that they're from, their close proximity, or because I know, uh, you know, Norway's uh, definitely in, and I mean, they're the top team, and there's a bunch of other teams that are announced, and some that are we're still trying to figure out. Um, are some countries on the like on the fence about it, and some countries aren't, or everyone's kind of waiting to get that permission? No, I think we have um, around 90% of the teams confirmed because they can travel. Um, Got it. We have, we have 20 teams on, on each gender, so 40 teams mm -hmm. in total. Um, yeah. We are now working on, because later this week we will announce all the teams, but uh, a couple of teams are already announced. Um, and um, uh, we're working to bring in the guys from uh, Qatar, the guys from Chile, um, of course, uh, you and Trevor, um, yeah. and uh, also uh, Brazilians. So we are working on uh, on those teams to uh, to get them in. And if for a reason it cannot be possible that the Dutch government said they are not allowed, we cannot make an exception, then we have our our reserve list. Um, and yeah. uh, I can tell you now, it's it's. It's still a secret, um, but <laughs> beginning beginning of um, of September, we have some some surprises coming up. Okay, okay. Damn, you're getting me excited. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. But <laughs> Let's wait a couple like of surprise. weeks, and and, and, um, and and you will hear it. <laughs> it's awesome to Perfect. see you guys making stuff happen um, in such a, a turbulent year i'm wondering so you how many events did you originally have planned you said what 15 dutch tour stops and then a couple king of the courts and then so you ended up putting on six though right dutch stops how did those go like was that because um, we had we had four or three avps um and we you know we i don't know if you saw much but um donald's on the only put it in, in the long beach parking lot um it was pretty confined i'm, I'm curious what uh what kinds of stuff you guys had to do to put on your tour successfully? I don't know if it was, you know, you guys returned to normal or if you had to do like pretty closed and confined uh, like the AVP did. Um, I, I don't know, how was it different over there this year than, than a normal year? Yeah, um, in total, those 15 tournaments, um, we are planning around 10, 10 events of the Dutch tour. Um, and the most challenging thing what we have is um, you can organize events with public but there is a, a 1.5 meter social distance rule. So that means that between the people you have that 1.5 meter social distance or between families. So everybody who is at your event must be uh, registered 
and uh, so if there is a kind of kind of small outbreak, you must have the contacts of everybody so you can inform them. Um, so we started actually with our first stop of the Dutch tour at uh, 5 a.m. in the morning, the first of <laughs> July, because we want to be the first port in the Netherlands. Uh, I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. And so we did it when uh, the sun came up. So everybody <laughs> was there, the press, and it was an idea of uh, the director of the Dutch Volleyball Federation. And uh, we organized together with them. And it was, it was a kind of surrealistic thing that everybody with the sun wake up, everybody was there at, at four. And then at five, uh, we started a tournament. And, and then, for instance, uh, two hours later, somebody was asking me, Wilco, what's, what's the time? And I said, um, oh, it's 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> So that was yeah. that was cool stuff. Yeah. That's really cool. It's cool to see you guys getting oh. super creative with everything. Because I mean, it, it's been interesting to see how people have responded with COVID, and some people have like it's been kind of defeating. You know, like for example, in in uh, the U.S. right now, where our college football conferences are kind of fighting about when they're going to play or who they're going to play and if we can play. But you just kind of you're like, all right, well, let's put our unique unique stamp on it and let's start at five in the morning. It's awesome. Yeah, it is um, the first month. Um, I was also panicking in my head, you know, uh, what's uh, <laughs> what going to happen. And then after the first month, then I then I changed my mind. We all changed our mind, and we thought, okay, we can we can keep on crying every day to what what we cannot do, but let's focus on the things what you can do. Um, so the the other thing what what we developed is is a special stadium for King of the Court. What we're going to use. And the stadium is a stadium where everybody who is coming get their own skybox. So that yeah. means we have in total around 50 skyboxes um, for the listeners. Uh, put in your imagination containers and you put all the containers on top of each other and you, and you build <laughs> the stadium. Yeah. And everybody get their own their own skybox, their own container. You can be in in that in that skybox together with um, the people who can be who are allowed to enter your 1.5 social meter distance rule because there are some some possibilities for that um, but nobody can enter uh, or nobody can leave their uh, their skybox during uh, during one session and one session is a is a women game um, it's a, a, a performance of an artist i will come back to on that later and then a man game so in total two and a half hours and um, um, you have your phone to order your food, your drinks. A hostess will bring will bring everything you order. The only <laughs> thing, if you have to leave your skybox, if you have really, really problems to go to the toilet. So, so <laughs> <laughs> and um, and, uh, and the other thing is you will be entertained for uh, for two and a half hours, and that's also kind of kind of good thing now because the music industry is also uh, hitting hard, and um, those artists cannot perform, and we make it happen that. Um, in um, in between two games, uh, there will be some music. Um, so you have uh, you, you have your night out with your friends. Um, volleyball, music, entertainment, your drinks, your food, in this crazy time. So yeah, let's let's focus on the things what you can do. Yeah, this is the coolest thing because you guys released the um, digital renderings of what it's going to look like. It looks like a little like coliseum you know usually stands go outward and you get further away from the match but this one goes straight up <laughs> and the box seats look so cool uh you can go to the king of the court site and um see these pictures i believe they're still up there right yeah yeah it's um the gladiator pit they're calling it already it's it's so cool and i, I think that's a cool thing about this particular time is because um the promoters or people who are putting these events on have to get creative and you're actually like trying out new things, new things that maybe you'll want to keep in the future, but you never would have tried it before if it wasn't for COVID, you know? Uh, so there might be some really cool stuff that comes out of this. I spoke with the AVP, uh, Donald Sun and, and um, the staff and they all seem to really love what they're learning about putting an event on like this and in a lot of ways it's a lot easier um and there's certain things that i think that it seemed like they were gonna continue to do moving forward um so you can kind of use this time to your advantage and our sport might actually be better off in the long run because of it i mean that stadium sounds so cool 
it's hard for me to believe if it's really great and the fans love it that you won't do it again you know even when it's not covid times yeah, the, um, the thing is in in those crisis times um most of the time uh, new things will arise at, uh, at at crises so and also for the future just what you said um i think also if we focus on beach volleyball um i think we will go more into a structure where uh, the value of watching the game will be higher for the spectators. Um, and that it's not normal that you can watch uh, eight games uh, for free on a bleacher, for instance, which is good for the sport. Right. But, um, yeah. I, can, I, I can give you an example in the Netherlands. Normally at our events of the Dutch tour, people are not paying money to enter. Uh, but now they are mm. they are paying a small entrance entrance fee, and um, maybe this is the start for something what is normal for them to pay a fee to to watch to watch our sport, um, and that we yeah. also have all their contact details so they can so we can inform them. Um, so yeah, we need to take the best out of out of the worst things and try to develop it, and those things are going step by step because that stadium we. We announced that stadium and we launched it together with the FIVB on their website. And in one week, um, people in China, in Brazil, in the United States, in the UK, they were writing about that stadium. And then people were, ask, were asking me, Wilcom, everybody is then writing about your stadium. Is this something that you, that, that you think you can protect? And I said, no, this is something for the sport, for the beach volleyball, use it. Because I'm also using other stuff. And together we can make it happen because we need to do this together. If you if you are if you are alone in those crisis times, you 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 cannot achieve anything. And um, now we mm -hmm. all we need to put on the shoulders on it and um, and make it happen for all of us. And um, hopefully we will benefit from this because I seriously believe that 2021 will be extremely difficult uh, to organize events. And after the Olympics, mm -hmm. I'm I'm very curious about corporate. Um, corporate uh, financial contribution for events as well. So we, we need to find a good model, which is worth for everybody to invest. I'm really curious where the idea for the skyboxes came from. Cause I feel like that, that couldn't have been like, Oh, we can't have normal stands. Boom. Skyboxes. Let's just stack them on top of each other. That's such a cool idea. How long did that take to formulate? And did you like see an example of it somewhere and you were like, you know, maybe we could try that because it's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. But it was, it was something when I was focusing on, okay, I was checking a normal bleacher you cannot use anymore. So it's useless to, to, to hire it. But what can we do? It was, okay, if we make uh, boxes like, uh, like, like a terrace of a cafe is now using outdoors, everybody had their own, their own place. Um, and then on the evening, I, I think I was, I was in the shower or something like that. <laughs> I thought, uh, what can we do? Okay, I built all those skyboxes. And then, then I start with, with our uh, creative guy. I start to work on that. And um, if, if, I, if, if I show you the first pictures, those, those, those look very awful. <laughs> then five or six, six rounds, and then you develop and develop. And now, yeah, if you go to to kingofthecourt.com you 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 see those drawings and hopefully in a month uh, the stadium is there uh, build up live for the events really cool and you you mentioned uh, artists too um that they're going to be so you're going to have kind of performers going in between sessions and so each session is each round is 15 minutes right it is um uh yeah king of the king of the court is the big elimination race Mm -hmm. So uh, we start with 20 teams in, in phase one. Then we go to 15 teams in, uh, in the group stage. Okay. 10 in the semifinals and five in the final. So um, in, one, uh, in one round, there will be five teams playing against each other. Um, you can score your points on, only on the winner's side. And those five teams are playing three, let's call them, sub-rounds. So the first sub round is 15 minutes with five teams and a team with uh, the, the less points, they will be eliminated. And then we go, then we have a five minute break. Then we go to the, to the second sub round, uh, again, five, uh, 15 minutes, but then with four teams 
and number four will be eliminated with less points. And then okay. we have three left, and those three will go to the next big round, which is then from phase one to the group stage. Uh, and and that's, that will be the, the system. Um, first, you must, you must uh, go to the next round all the time. And at the end, um, you, uh, you can become the king of the court or the queen, if you're talking about the women tournament. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. King of the court is, it's probably one of the most exciting ways to watch beach volleyball that's ever been made because there's new elements. There's a team getting eliminated every round. So that's kind of like, you know, builds up the, the drama a little bit. There's a clock, which other sports have, that makes that a little exciting that we usually don't have. And uh, it's faster, right? So there's more points being played because uh, you're not, it's not two teams and that team has to reset. It's the, the team serving is ready to go already, right away. So you end up playing probably, I don't know, 30, 40% more volleyball for the fans. And they're looking back at the clock the whole time. Everyone's looking at the clock. It's, it's really fun to um, just to switch it up for us. But also, I think for the fans, it's like you're just, you see their heads going back and forth, looking at the play and then looking at the clock and, and trying to watch the score. And um, there's some strategy to it, which, you know, we're all learning as we go. Uh, we're all trying to figure it out in the beginning. As with the rule changes, right? We're you guys were tweaking the rules to make it uh, work better and better. So um, I'm excited to see, like, you know, it's going to be even better product this year. And um, if for our for our listeners, it's probably, I mean, seriously, one of the most entertaining ways to watch beach volleyball. So for sure, you got to tune into this. Um, and how I, actually, how can our listeners? Um, watch King of the Court and follow it? Um, we're now working on, um, on showing um, uh, the program, I think, on, on 11 sports in the United States. Um, but we have the live stream on the website of the FIVB, on the YouTube channel, and also on the website of King of the Court. And um, that will be the most easy, uh, easiest way, I think. Yeah um and um yeah it's it's absolutely right what you what you're saying um look normal beach volleyball is great and it's good and uh, it doesn't have to be changed uh because we uh, we all like that game but i but i think and we think from sportworks that it's also good to develop and see what you can do more and if we take a look at the olympics and the ioc uh, one of their goals is to have at the end, at the Olympics, with less, less athletes competing for more medals. So that means if you are going to, uh, to play beach volleyball at the Olympics um, and you can play for two medals instead of one, um, which uh -huh. might be a bigger goal maybe, maybe in 2024 in Paris or, or maybe in 2028 in Los Angeles, just, just um, planting the seed now, and um, I think it's it's also good because we attract a younger generation. Um, the people from from 18 till 34 years old, they they are watching King of the Court, and the regular people watching beach volleyball at the age of 30 till 50. So it's also good to attract a younger younger group, and that's because of it's going faster. Just what you said. Um, there is only eight seconds between two rallies, so that's that's a lot of beach volleyball. Do you think that the, mm -hmm. the FIVB could learn a thing or two from King of the Court? And because I think you're right that the 18 to 34 demographic likes it probably probably watches it a little bit more than your standard beach because it's so fast. What I'm wondering is, is if the maybe the FIVB could probably learn a thing or two or maybe tweak their rules to model a little bit of that speed and high tempo game of the King of the Court. Yeah, and are you guys working together with the FIVB? Because I know you said that it's being streamed um, on the FIVB's YouTube channel. I didn't know if you guys were separate entities or if you were kind of partnering up a little bit. One helps the other. Yeah, that's that's very 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 good uh, question, Travis. It's, um, <laughs> basically, um, look, we created that King of the Court format. Of course, King of the Court is is well known as a as a training exercise, but with those rules, uh, we created that. And um, we spoke with the FIVB about organizing this. And at the end, um, FIVB is now the owner of the concept. 
and we have the license for seven years to organize it. Okay. And that's how it works in at the federation. So we gave it practically to the FIVB and they gave it back to us. So we have a great cooperation with them. Um, and if you take a look at all international federations and we, we can, everybody, we are all athletes, you know, so we're always complaining about federations and it must be different, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. But I think we can also give credits to, to, to the FIVB that they, that they took the opportunity to, to get something new. Um, they could easily yeah. say, no, 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 we don't want it and we, we use our, our regular beach volleyball. But they also see that they can attract a new way of, of, of beach volleyball or with a new audience, which is good for them. So from my side, um, thumbs up for the FIVB that they are, that they are supporting us in, in this way. And, um, and that, that's the thing, how we, how we need to work together and, and what we also did um, in 2018 with the AVP. It's like uh, it's a great, yeah. a great combination because in 2018 it was FIVB, AVP, and SportWorks. Uh, I think. Yeah, that's really. Go ahead. Sorry, it, you're a little laggy, so I'll start talking. Then I hear you, but uh, I, I think that's awesome that you guys are working together. And I think the FIVB is probably stoked to have you guys putting on a King of the Court in a year where you can't get Olympic points. So it's obviously kind of a, a down year for the FIVB. Um, so I feel like you're sort of breathing life back into international beach volleyball for the year and until we can get going again, which is, it's super cool to see, like, especially right on the heels of the AVP where it seems like everyone's kind of picking up a little bit. I saw that the Norwegian, uh, they just had their Norwegian uh, beach championships over there. So I feel like everyone's finding a way to make it work, which is good for the sport in general. Yes, yeah, for sure, and then uh, you see that that in in the countries uh, a national national tour is starting, and now we can um, normally King of the Court will be uh, in in this 2020 year um, one of one of the many many events, and now we are kind of highlight, um, which we need to take advantage of because now we can show it to a lot of people, and it's 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 up to all of them to make a decision if you like it or not. But if you if you like beach volleyball and you are open for changes, um, this is this is something what yeah what what might might fit to you. So yeah, take a look at it and and there are there are also another other good 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 new new developments. Yeah? So uh, uh, we are not the only one, but let's see how it goes in the future. Yeah, I feel like this year could have been looked at so many different ways for you guys because you guys had you were like a startup event in in a sport with long established norms and then and then you have COVID happen and I feel like you guys could have just sort of disappeared what made you want to make this happen as badly as you did with how many obstacles that there would be because I feel like I mean we kind of mentioned it before we were like you just got to control what you can and make something happen when you can um, but what made you want to really push it to have an event this year instead of waiting for maybe 2021 where it'd probably be a little bit easier for you guys to pull something off um, I think it's um, taking the opportunity uh, to be one of the one of the few events. So we have a big advantage on that one, um, and that's that's something what um, what we are telling everybody. It's 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 a one uh, it's it's one event. I think we are the only international sport event in the Netherlands uh, so far. So also over here we have a lot of a uh, lot of attention and people really want to want to be part of it. They they want to to watch it, but also partners like um, we organized in the city of Utrecht. Um, um, I don't know if you are familiar with cycling, but um, the the Vuelta uh, cycling tour should start in Utrecht this year, but it now it starts only in Spain. So they they don't have other big events now. This is good for this is good for the city. It's good for the country. Um, so both are supporting uh, very, uh, also financially, they are contributing on this event and they're supporting it. Um, our, our, our sponsors in, in the Netherlands, um, if, I, if I tell you that we have, we have a sponsor called Intel, the hotel chain, and um, they are giving for free 325 nights. Can you imagine that? They're giving away for free because the hotel business they have, I think they have 
five or ten percent of people in their hotel in the last month yeah. they also need something some, some something new something good for 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 themselves because they can be on national television they go they go worldwide because we will be will be in in 200 countries um and also for their for their own crew so that's the thing on your question why you're doing it we're doing it to because we want to make it happen for everybody. We want to bring joy in their life in, in a moment that everybody is, is panicking and, and, and it's the right everybody is because we are in the pandemic. Uh, nobody uh, discovered this before. Uh, so yeah, we, or nobody faced it before. So this is, this is something, if you have the opportunity, we go for it. And, and maybe I, I'm, I'm knocking wood. <laughs> maybe um, one week up front, we cannot organize it, but at least we tried. We tried to do everything, and then and then we will organize it next year because then we did a lot already. What we can do next year, but um, yeah, we are we we want to make it happen. Give it give it a chance. Give it a try, and we see on everybody that um, that they appreciate it a lot. Yeah, yeah, we definitely appreciate it. That's for sure. That's good to hear. It's it's cool to see how many industries can be positively impacted by uh, by sports and i think that if anything this pandemic has shown how much we love and value sports and how much of a broader impact it has like you mentioned you know the hotel five to ten percent capacity and now you guys are going to fill it up um people are going to have something to watch on tv and your sponsors have, have a way to advertise now it's cool to see just how wide ranging of an impact a smaller micro sport like beach volleyball can have um, it's cool to see, you know, guys like you and, and the AVP taking advantage um, and it kind of pulling whatever strings you can to pull it off. What's been the biggest obstacle? Has it been um, getting players able to travel uh, or has it been like kind of talking with, uh, you know, your government to being like, all right, well, like, what do we have to do to make this event possible? Um, the biggest one of the biggest uh, issues is, um, of course, getting players in uh, because you want to have a world worldwide event as much as possible. But from the European Union, like I said, 90% can can easily travel at the moment. Uh, but it, it's it's a huge obstacle because you we want to have uh, Try and Trevor playing the tournament, and uh, we want to have Agatha and Duda from from Brazil coming, and we want to have. Um, uh, Stockman Larsen coming from the United States, you know, um, but also financially, there are also some some challenges. There is not a um, um, when we started with this one year ago, I think we had around twelve sponsors who wants to contribute on cash on cash, um, and now it's it it are all value in kind deals, which we all um, accept and also understand because those kind, for instance, one of the big sponsors is Maurice Lacroix. It's a watch brand. Um, it's really an excellent brand. You will hear more from them. It's, they're also the partners of, of Moll and Sorum. Um, but um, they told me, Wilco, we want to go long term with King of the Court because we, we see the fit what we have. But for now, um, we cannot make it to, to give you a lot of cash because we don't have it. We were not selling those watches. Uh, in 2021, the situation will be different. And, and then I'm the first one to say, I understand. Let's focus on the future, what we can do. And they are now contributing in, um, I think, 20 watches. And those watches have a very, very nice value of right. 2,000 US dollars yeah. each. So, yeah, it's also something extra what players can, can win. Um, so we are very happy with, with that. And those, those things are huge obstacles, yes. It's, it's cool to see that you guys are, are still making it happen. But I'm, I'm wondering, it's cool to see you guys are future-minded too. Like in an ideal year, how many King of the Courts would you want to put on? Um, that, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. Yeah, I mean, it, and if you know, because I know it's still super new. So, I mean, maybe you guys are still experimenting with that number. And I know it's weird too with it being, you guys started it in an Olympic quad. So maybe in the two years where it's not Olympic qualification, it could be different. But I don't know if you had your mind set on what a, like a perfect season might look like. Yeah. Um, I think in a perfect season, and maybe this, this sounds a little bit strange, but I will explain. Maybe in a perfect season, we have 
one or two standalone events of King of the Court. And we have between three and five combinations of a regular beach volleyball event and the King of the Court event. Okay. Um, when we take a perspective on that from the business side, the beach volleyball sport worldwide is too small to have a new tour on King of the Court for, of 10 events um, with a cost of 10 million, um, building up a stadium for using for a week, which costs 400,000 US dollars uh, to build it up and to use it only for a week. It's ridiculous to, to put that amount of uh, money into the sport. It's better to make combinations so you can play a regular beach volleyball tournament. If you are eliminated, then you start to play king of the court like, like you do with tennis. You play single and double. Why not with king of the court and regular beach volleyball? Talking about from a business perspective, that's something what I think is the best. And then you have a standalone event of a start event of king of the court and also um, a final event. Um, and I know that then not all the players can, or not all the teams can participate in King of the Court if you have that combination, but maybe not the last four teams in the tournament. But if you take a look at the Sunday, normally on a, on a beach volleyball four-star event, then you have four games um, and you have a full stadium. When you play on Saturday and Sunday, the full King of the Court event, which you, which you, you are able to do, then the players can play more, um, you can earn more money, and um, the national, uh, the local organizing committee, they, they still have um, more to offer for the fans. Um, for instance, in the Netherlands, when, when we organized that four-star event um, and our home teams are eliminated in the quarterfinal, we don't have any home teams in the final, which means that maybe TV is not going to, uh, to broadcast it and the ticket sales is not going well. But with King of the Course, you have five teams on, on the court, so the chances of a Dutch team in the final is bigger. Um, so people will come, they will they will pay for the ticket, and uh, the TV will broadcast it, which is good for the sponsors. So I, I won't yeah. say two of ten King of the Court events. It's ridiculous. We yeah. must make combinations. They must make smart and do it together. Yeah, I love it. Just ad adapting to what you're given. I feel like a lot of people would just commit to like we want to be the best beach volleyball tour and we're, so we need more events and more money and all this rather than taking what the landscape is giving them i think that's pretty cool but you know you know what i'm interested have you ever thought i'm sure you have we always talk about it all the time would there be a way to put an event on that's more that makes it's like country versus country not individual teams but the countries themselves would that be a I'm just randomly thinking, would, there, would that be possible with King of the Court to, to do that? So it's like USA wins or Netherlands wins. And, you know, you could have the five teams playing, but then the way that each of them finish, maybe there's five US versus, I guess there's not that many teams, but I don't know. We, we think about it a lot on the, on the Sandcast. We talk about bringing the college format to the world tour so that you have you know the schools fight each other instead it's the countries i wonder if uh that would be possible with king of the court somehow to tweak the format have you ever thought about stuff like that yeah i um i did and um i also think you you experienced that when when you were playing yourself during you you played two tournaments with we organized four in 2018 and after each tournament i was changing the rules <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Said, uh, that's true. We, we all, all the time we had a technical meeting and and then we said we need to change this because um uh this this was not fair enough so we are cons constant uh constantly uh, trying to develop For and sure. also this with with countries we can do it but on the other side we can also mix nationalities if we want uh um, oh that would be true you did that for a little bit you had two uh different teams combined because it was substitutes you know, the reason I, I thought of it was because earlier you said that IOC, I believe you said, wants more people to get medals, right? And yeah. I figure if you have like, let's say four teams per, or three teams per country, then you have six people winning a medal rather than two, you know? Uh, I don't know. That's, yeah, it's, it's interesting to think about. I think um, uh, 
during during our our road during the route what we're taking we um we yeah we need to adapt and develop as much as possible um and yeah. also inside the rules i still imagine something that that you told me uh, i think it was in huntington um that you said wilco if we are um, playing king of the court and uh, we have for instance uh 10 points more than the other teams why not we can step out and wait so 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 we can rest and then uh, we yeah. uh, we we step back in um when we are ready for it um those things yeah. um yeah i'm yeah i like it i think in some way you were also doing that because Trevor was uh, hitting the surf outside the stadium, so everybody needs to wait. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Or we hit sky balls, maybe. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think just being open-minded and, and like when you have player meetings, you told us, bring your ideas to me. We're open. Uh, even if it's a bad idea, it's, or there are no bad ideas, really. You know, if it's, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But um I feel like you're you're bringing so much more energy and ideas to yourself in terms of being creative when you're open like that um rather than other you know being defensive and like don't don't try to tell us what to do we know the right way kind of approach yeah it's um yeah my my vision is that we have to do things together uh, yeah. maybe alone you are faster but together you you will come come further so that's the thing why I think it's together. And um, um, I'm also here because, yeah, or here, I, I think it's, it's my task to, to, to develop. And um, uh, maybe it, it's not about teaching, but telling people um, that there's also another way to do it. And then it's up to them to make a decision, yes or no. But um, uh, that, that's one of, one of the goals I have. And then, then we will see where... <laughs> how far we, yeah. we, we, we will come all together yeah For it's sure. great to see because everyone in beach volleyball always says you know we got to work together you know like the avp was saying that and then p1440 was saying that and before them you know the nvl was saying like we got to work together to grow a sport but i feel like you're like the only guy who's actually bringing everything together like avp like let's piggyback together and do you guys have your event in huntington and then we'll do a king of the court and then you did it in hawaii too and then with the FIVB, you piggybacked off them a few times. And it's, it's awesome to see you actually putting it into practice because everyone talks about it. And it, I love to see that you actually like do it. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> so. it's also because we start with, um, with, with telling everybody this. And then if you have a soulmate on that, um, let's say uh, El Lau and myself, we have a lot of contacts. And I, I remember the first time uh, Casey Patterson um uh linked us to each other uh sport works and the avp so i took a plane to uh, to the office uh of, of the avp and um and there was l sitting in the room and said i basically that king of the court idea i like it a lot because you take the best the part of beach volleyball you take into a new game and we want to go back to hawaii there is some it was uh, the end of 2017 something like that and he said we want to go to hawaii why not um, organizing King of the Court on the Friday? Because we still need something for the Friday. And that's yeah. from my perspective, working together, give each other's chances and possibilities. And um, if you are on, on, on that route, if you, and you are on that mindset, then, um, then you can do it together. Yeah, I believe in that. Yeah, and it's, you, so you guys have your, your one-off event in September. Um, so you can, can you give our listeners just a little, um, the details of the event? So when the exact dates are and you have 20 teams per gender, correct? Yeah. Okay. So we start on, um, it's also some, something new and different. We start on Wednesday evening. We only play on evenings, uh, because on evenings, everybody is free. They don't have to go to work. So they are available to watch an event. Why organize on Wednesday 11 in the morning when nobody can enter? <laughs> so, um, yeah. so we start on Wednesday. Um, and on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, it will be between uh, 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. We have the, the first phase when, uh, when we have four groups of each, each, each gender. Talking then uh, now about the women, for instance. Then we have four groups of, uh, of women teams, four groups of five. 
And then out of those four groups of five, five teams will be eliminated. So each number five and um, the weakest one of the number fours. And then we start with 15 teams on, on, on Friday. Uh, again, the afternoon and the evening. And uh, they are in, in three groups. And of those three groups, again, the number five will be eliminated. And um, uh, the two weakest one of um, uh, the numbers four will, uh, will go out as well. And then we have the semi-final with 10. And then the final with five on, on Saturday. Um, and uh, it will be the 9th till the 12th of September. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, what you said, 20 teams on the women's side, 20 teams on the, on the men's side. And it looks like you have a really good field too. I mean, you mentioned some of the names. Um, we got Anders and Christian are playing. I know that Try and Trevor, you guys are most likely going to be able to play, still waiting for confirmation. Um, it looks like you pretty much got a full field though, aside from – a couple Americans and, and Brazil, tough to travel, it looks like, but everyone yeah. else is just excited to play. It should be an awesome event to watch. I think everybody, everybody's told us they want to play. Even uh, the Russians want to play, but they have an important uh, national tournament over there for their sponsors, so they cannot participate. Um, but we have on the men's side, we have uh, Tola Wickler from, from Germany. Uh, of course, we have uh, the Dutch teams uh, over here. We have a um, very strong team on King of the Court, Herrera Gavira. Very strong team, very good side out team. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy to have um, Karambula and Rossi. Karambula with his oh. style. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it will make you crazy on that. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah. That's good to have from hopefully from Chile the the Grimalds, um, the guys from Qatar. We have um, what can we say? Um, the Czech guys, Piersi Swiner. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of very very good teams. Uh, Latvian uh, Latvian guys, of course. Um, some oil of Smedins, They were there already in 2017 when we have uh, when we had our first trial event in the city of Utrecht, only with five teams. It was with Samuel of Smedins over there, and uh, at that time with Patterson Brunner. So, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm happy to have it. And, and also on, on the women's side, Swiss teams, uh, German teams, um, very, very, very good, uh, good teams. Yeah. yeah. And you, you said you're getting some performers too between the stages. I don't know if you, if you wanted to like announce it. Or not, or if it was in for, like readily available information. But you said there's like entertainment between some of the stages. Yeah, there will be some 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 very good DJs uh, performing. Um, last time we had uh, Henry James, Ryan Marciano. They 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 are big in Europe. Sometimes they perform in the United States as well. You know, um, the Netherlands is is a country where there's a lot of uh, a lot of DJs coming from like uh, electronic music. So uh, so we're working on that, but. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend money or we are not going to spend money on, on DJs for, for one hour. Some of them, some of them really, it's crazy. They, they still say that we have to pay 50 K for one hour. <laughs> uh, it's, times are changing guys. Come on. Maybe, <laughs> not afford it. Uh, maybe before yeah. uh, uh, Corona pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you can ask it, but now you need to change. So, and a couple of them, they understand yeah. and they are extremely welcome at our event. And, we already signed a couple of deals and we will um, announce them in the next week via, via our social media. Follow it, listeners. Follow King of the Court. Whoever's running your social media, by the way, whoever's running your Instagram, you, you hired a good guy because they put up the best highlights. They do great. <laughs> Whoever um, runs that. It's, uh, it's good. I think uh, my colleague uh, Gijs Dieleman, they like it a lot together with the people from the Dutch Volleyball Federation because... Gijs, he's very creative on, on new things and some, some girls at the Federation as well. So I'm very to have them on board. Yeah. Well, you're running a, a smooth operation. COVID or not, you guys are, you're making things happen. And uh, so we appreciate what you're doing uh, for the sport. And I know Tri definitely was getting an extra event this year, getting them out of the mountains and uh, into Utrecht. <laughs> I can't take that long of a vacation. But that's a good thing. I have something to so I've, just having something to train for is amazing for us because we don't want to be taking too much time off anyway. Yeah, and and try you remember maybe from the last time when when last time teams thought that you can easily play king of the courts, but you have to prepare because the rules are different and you must make points. For instance, yeah. And the listeners, they they will they will definitely know it after after they they will see it. 
when you can only win points on your winner side. So that means if somebody is serving and you need that point and it's an easy serve, which normally go out, you take it. And, and we can easily see when, if teams yeah. are not prepared, they will drop the ball, which means that they have no point. They need yeah. to wait. They are, they, are, they are losing time and they cannot earn their points. So it's, it's our special, yeah. tactics, special tactics. I would have never yeah, thought Yeah, there's that. a total strategy. There's a to there, and there's way more things than that, too, that we're learning as we go. So, Travis, don't be, a, don't be alarmed if you get the call because we're going to need maybe like five teams at the beach to train us for this event. Because <laughs> really, you have to just play it to understand the strategies and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's what's great about it. You feel it's it's like refreshing and new. You're like, I I thought I kind of knew all the strategies of beach volleyball, but this one like, you it's like you're playing a different sport just a little bit, and it makes it so fun. Yeah, it's and that is it's super fun. So Wilco, I don't know if you saw, but so we put on a tournament um, to raise money. So Eric Zahn, uh, King of the Court, was his like favorite tournament ever. He loved that format. So we put on a king of the court tournament to raise money for a scholarship fund that we put in his name and everyone had an absolute blast. And of course, I mean, we made it like the outfits were ridiculous and people were just going like full Eric Zahn with it. But that was my first time really playing like competing in king of the court. Like, of course, like you mentioned, you use it in training and practice, um, but playing it, it's super fun. And uh, it, it's a little bit different, but I, I would not have thought to play like an easy float serve out of bounds. Now you got me thinking, Wilco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it was it's, it's something would be also it's not to 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 give ourselves some compliments but this is something what we are um, i think what kind of company we are and i'm very happy to do what you were mentioning about about eric zaun and um we discovered that we had um one of his last jerseys he was wearing and he was also uh signing that jersey with his own autograph so at the end, I, I contacted uh, uh, Katie, I think, and um, and now his brother has has that had the, the jersey. That's great. I, I think it's special, and I was following what, what you did, and it's excellent. And I think uh, we need um, to remember him as what kind of great great guy he was. Um, and um, I start to know him at the final the final party of of King of the Court. <laughs> I will never forget. I will he, never. He loves, <laughs> that's one other thing that King of the Court uh, I heard very well. You guys threw a good party. <laughs> only, only oh, after yeah. the last game was played. Eh? Uh, <laughs> well, Woko, is there um, is there anything else that you want to mention, or anything that we might have missed uh, so far about the the upcoming King of the Court, um, or just about King of the Court and what you're trying to create in general? Um, and uh, for me, uh, beach volleyball started in the United States. Um, when we organized that King of the Court event in Huntington Beach, um, three weeks up front, nobody knows about that, that tournament. And at the final day, it was packed with over two and a half thousand or three thousand uh, people over there. And I think King of the Court belongs and needs to be in the United States. That's something what, what we will work on in the next years to make it happen. Hopefully together with the AVP and, and other partners in the United States, let's do it together. And um, hopefully this event in, in, in Utrecht can be a start of something, something new for, uh, for the coming years in combination with other tournaments, what I said. And um, um, yeah, let's um, let's try to make it happen all together because I think this is something uh, the fans in the United States they they really really like it and they understand the game. They they all played it and they 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 know how um, how to watch, how to cheer. And um, for us as a promoter, it was a great great feeling to end um, to end the King of the Court Tour in 2018 over there. And uh, I still want to thank everybody for that. And also we are we still receiving. Questions. We have a very, very small web shop, uh, merchandise shop, very <laughs> small shop. But every day there is still a strange guy from the United States ordering <laughs> one cap or one jersey for <laughs> 25 US dollars, paying more um, uh, uh, trans transport costs than uh, they're, they're paying for 
$30 transport cost and $25 for a cap. Guys, you, I, I love you all. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, but that's something, Interesting. That's, some, that's something what, what it's inside the people of the United States. You are, you are huge fans and um, we are working on to, to bring it back, to bring it back. Well, whatever Love we it. can do to, uh, to help you bring it over here, just let us know and, and we'll do it. Just the more beach volleyball we can get over here, the better. So happy, happy to help any way we can. Appreciate it. For sure. Well, we appreciate uh, all your time. I know you're super busy over there st getting the event going. I'm sure you've got a, a couple things you have to do every day, <laughs> work until midnight over there and try. I know you're enjoying your vacation in the mountains and uh, celebrating that win. Congrats again. Um, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys for the time. Um, anything else that we might have missed? I'm, I'm very happy um, that after maybe maybe two years, we, we spoke again, guys. It was, yeah. it was good to see you. Good to talk to you. And um, let's, um, let's schedule a meeting um, or another, another one at the end of the year. Yeah, I tell you what, when we, uh, sure, when, yeah. we, when we get a king of the court in the United States, we'll do one of these in person. I think Ooh. that's important. That could be <laughs> in, your, in your studio. Yeah, um, perfect. Perfect. Well, Wilco, good luck setting everything up. Uh, we appreciate all you're doing for the sport right now. I hope it's uh, a huge success. Um, I'm excited to watch it on the stream and uh, try. Good luck playing down there. We'll see if we can get a couple of practices in and get you boys ready. Yeah, let's go. Thank you, Wilco. Great to see you. Great to talk to you. Shoots, guys. You're welcome. All right. Bye-bye. Shoots. Bye. -bye. Shoots. Bye.